Hello. Who we got on the line? How are Hi, Charlie. This is Evan. How are you? Evan, I'm doing good. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Nice to hear from you boys, eh? Nice to hear from you. Are you in Canada? What's going Dude, on? Calling in uh, calling from Buffalo. Sorry. Oh, close enough. Damn though. near, yeah. <laughs> Look at Canada from my bedroom window pretty much. So uh yeah, I got a question for you. Need some uh relationship advice a little bit. Relationship uh, advice. Well you I, came to the right spot. You did. <laughs> well, during the uh, winter months, I make maple syrup on the side of what I normally do. And uh, usually it's early morning, uh, sometimes in the afternoons, usually goes up until about 11 o'clock at night, sometimes midnight, suckering down some good old lattes and everything. And then uh, come home and the miss isn't too pleased until she tastes the syrup the next day. So I guess the real question is, is how do I try to get her off my back a little bit from making syrup? Well, well. isn't that the age old question, Charlie? How do you keep the old <laughs> ball and chain off your back? Well, here's the deal. Miles, I've seen you interact with Ann, you know, and you kind of talk a big game, but apparently you're a big old cuddle bug when no one else is. I don't know is about booking. that. I don't, That's yeah, what I, don't I know. heard at the bar last night. Oh, no, I don't know. That's <laughs> what I heard. Only when I'm sick. <laughs> Hang on, Evan. <laughs> I, I I need some clarification. So basically, sure. Around maple syrup time, you know, you're tapping trees, doing your thing. She gets annoyed you're working too much. Is that the short story here? Long story short, yeah. Okay. I'm a funeral director by day and then maple syrup producer by night, pretty much. Well, you're okay. a funeral director. Let's w- hold on with that. We're okay. going to dive yeah. into that in a little bit here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Does the maple syrup? Does, I knew that would open up a can of worms. Yeah, yeah it's the, this is a sticky situation getting even stickier. Sorry, Miles, I took your line. Uh, that was Miles's line. Um, see, I gave you credit. So, how much money? Well, how many days a year are you going out and you're gone till 11 p.m.? Is it like every weekend, every weekdays? Well, how how often? So pretty much I'll start tapping trees around first week in February. And then uh, usually it's about two to three boils a week going up until about the uh, about third to fourth week in uh, March. Sometimes it pushes into April, depending on the season. About two months, somewhere around there. Yeah, pretty much. Two months. And is it every day for two months? Not every day, pretty much every other day. I'm up at the farm checking trees, checking the buckets, all that sort of stuff. And then once I have enough, which is usually every three days or so, then I'm running a nice long boil pretty much. And are you making money off this? Uh, Haven't made a penny yet. Uh, I just uh, did a real test this year. I'm giving away about two and a half gallons of syrup for my brother's wedding next week is wedding favor. So oh. now that I know I can make it and I can do it next year, this coming season, uh, start February, I'll hopefully be making some money. And I've been doing it for about five years now. Nice. Okay. Well, why don't you bring her with? See, she gets bored very easily. She's the kind of woman I love her to death. Absolutely love her to death. She's the kind of woman who will tell me, hey, let's watch a movie. And then she passes out within 10 minutes. Yeah. Well, her, you attention, ha- her attention span isn't quite there. Do you have any kids? Zero. No. Okay. Well, from what I understand, uh, if you're going to take a kid to church, you don't just take a kid to church. You bring along their toys and a bag of Cheerios. True. So you could think about that option. Uh, <laughs> You know, that could uh, change the game for her. if you got a little mini iPad in there and a bag of Cheerios might not be as boring. What does your wife like to do? You know, uh, she likes 
to build Legos, believe it or not. That's your new kick. Um, awesome. That came absolutely out of nowhere. Loves to build Legos, so I might have to go to the Lego store and get her a nice little Lego. Well, store you're gonna have that to doesn't s- suck. <laughs> you're you're gonna have to sell some more maple syrup first. Though those Legos are uh, an expensive uh, deal, you know. Uh, I know. I just bought her a whole flower. I just bought her a whole flower set from Target the other day for her birthday. Fifty freaking dollars! Holy for smokes. a small little two hundred piece set for Legos. Ay 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 ay. Well, I think I know. I think that that's probably going to have to be the compromise. You shower her in Legos, and uh, <laughs> she'll let you play with your trees. <laughs> play with some tree juice, you know. Might as well. I mean, heck. Yeah, I, I think it might be uh, that simple. Now, the it, did you guys buy this property five years ago? Nope, nope. So this piece of property that we call the farm, we have absolutely zero animals on it. But uh, and my girlfriend makes fun of me all the time. Uh, it's a family property. My great grandfather bought it way back in the early or mid 1900s and it's been in our family ever since well, that's for cool. seven generations now that's great and i'm out of our out of our whole family well this maple syrup you start selling it i i think you know there's probably a little tax thing you can take advantage of over on your property so there might be some financial incentive for her to you and then you use that you know to your benefit say hey the more this makes the more legos you get so she sees that direct correlation. <laughs> you know, I think you're absolutely right. And I think now, you need if to, I don't mind, I well, I was going to go s- ahead. I was going to say you could also steer the conversation um, into shedding light on something. It's only about two months out of the year, and so have her try not to focus too much on the two months that you're busy. And focus on the 10 months that you're not as busy and you're uh, around a lot more. Could be a good move, too. You know, you know, on our very first date, she asked me, what was the or what kind of things do you like to do? And I told her from the very get go from September 1st to about April 1st. If I'm saying I'm going out hunting, I'm going out hunting. If I'm going out skiing, I'm going out skiing. If I'm making syrup, I'm making syrup. And she didn't take too very kindly to that. But guess what? She's been around for three years now. So, I mean, I don't know. It's that stretch from April 1st to August 31st that uh, she gets me pretty much. I'm always there for whenever she does. But just trying to keep her tamed and occupied, I guess. I see. Uh, so, Charlie, you know it's not just say. the maple no, syrup. It's, it's the hunting, the fishing. The no, it's he left it. out a lot of details. Yeah. Okay, you buried that. <laughs> I mean... I think now is your sweet spot time of the year nice. where you, you've got to nice. hang out with her and annoy the living hell out of her. So she's thankful you're yeah. getting out of her hair. Be overly nice. Try and be overly helpful with the Legos. Hey, I'll look for a four-piecer for you. You need a four-piecer? I'll find it. There you go. You help her with the Legos to the point where she wants you out of your life uh, for at least six months. <laughs> That's how you do it. You guys have basically so six months. You're off the radar uh, for about three months. You guys have a great relationship. Those last two, you got to invest in making her wanting you to leave. And then you do. Yeah, and, you got to be way too uh, on the radar in the off season for you. Yeah. Get did, on, yeah. Did, Anno- did, annoy the hell out of You know, I definitely... I definitely called the right people for some relation, relationship yeah. advice. You yeah, guys deserve yes, you uh, five star review, you know? Now let's you get know, into these. While I got you guys on the phone. Yeah. While I got you guys on the phone, my girlfriend and I, we just uh, went up to Green Bay, Wisconsin over the summer and uh, visiting one of her girlfriends that works in uh, one of the school districts up there. And I told her we got to stop at Fleet Farm. And holy Jesus, was that freaking amazing. Oh, we don't yeah. have any of those around here, but oh, my God. My girlfriend wanted me to get out of that store within five minutes. And I said, hell no. We got to go through the whole damn store. Well, they got a lot of maple syrup uh, equipment there, don't they? Sure do. They also have Toyland I- there. I wonder if you could get her some uh, Legos there. You know, show her the Toyland <laughs> next time. 
<laughs> I ended up with a jean vest, uh, one of them denim vests from there. And she says, "You, I'm not catching you wearing that thing around here. And I started laughing. The very first thing I did when I before we hopped on the plane was go to the bathroom and threw that uh, sucker on. And holy crap, was that thing comfortable. <laughs> I bet she was pretty turned yeah, on I by like that. that. Speaking of being not at all. Speaking of being <laughs> turned on, you work with the dead. <laughs> <laughs> Am I your first funeral director on the podcast? I'm trying to remember. I think I think so. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> belly up to the bar and tell us what's on your mind about being a funeral director. Well, usually when I belly up to a bar. And people ask me, what do I do? I just say I'm in the medical field. I don't even tell them if I'm a few hundred because it causes all the million and one questions. But uh, no, I'm a field director here in uh, New York State, uh, fifth generation. My great great grandfather started it in 1893 and uh, pretty much in a nutshell was uh, got off the golf course one day playing high school golf and was thinking about going to college to play. And I said, there's more to life than playing a game of golf. So I went and shadowed my dad for a couple of days and kind of said, why not? What? Let's just try it. And then uh, ended up here and it's been uh, about eight years, nine years now I've been licensed and uh, it's believe it or not, it's actually kind of fun. You got it. it you sounded. gave up a career in golf for a career playing with dead bodies. Uh, um, slightly. I wasn't quite good enough to go pro or anything like that, but uh, I knew what I wanted to do was to help people. So I'm like, it's an open opportunity. And it was one of those shooting from the hip types of things. And I said, why not? What? Let's just take it, roll with the punches and see what happens. And here I've been ever since for eight years. You ever uh, dealt with someone who got shot from the hip? Yeah. Uh, sadly, yes. Yeah, sadly, yes. I figured. Charlie, I know you got a lot of questions for him. Yeah, are you in the um? Are you in the uh, preparation of the body? Uh, is that part of your job, or are you just dealing with the people? Nope, I'm in all aspects. So I'm going out to houses and uh, nursing homes and hospitals and receiving scouting uh, decedents into our care. And then I'm uh, also preparing the deceased for viewings as well. Got it. Got it. So now what is what are the top three questions people once people find out you're a funeral director? What are their top three questions? Oh, boy. Um the one I get a lot is, is, do I take the gold teeth out of their mouth? The, the answer is yes. Is no. No? <laughs> the gonna, answer is no. That's but, why he's got to do the maple syrup gig. <laughs> <laughs> he's too honorable no, of a funeral director. Yeah, well, now what you're doing is you're just <laughs> inspiring grave robbers. They know that there's gold sitting in each of them graves. Yeah, and when his girlfriend could see, you got all this money in these people's mouths, and yet you got to go and do maple syrup. Yeah, one little pliers could uh, make up for all that time. Um, what do people get buried in uh, rings? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, uh, every state's different to a certain extent, but um, pretty much here in New York, it's. Uh, you can pretty much bury a decedent with whatever the family wants to have inside the casket. Yeah. Uh, as long as that casket's closed and shut, you can have whatever kind of services you want, and that person can be buried with whatever they want. Have you ever seen a body fall out of a casket? Believe it or not, no. No. Okay. Oh, thank God. Uh, got but a question no, no, for the not. question for the living for you. Uh, we were talking on our other sure. podcast. You bet your radio found where all podcasts be found. Uh, we were discussing on when is too early to start looking at a plot in a cemetery. Do you have any advice on that? Should we be looking now to find some prime real estate or can I wait till later? Well, here's my experience. It's never too late to do anything. And there's two things that you'll never escape, and it's death and taxes. So my piece of advice is if you're thinking about being buried in a cemetery, 
buy your plot now. That way it's cheaper in the long run because you can prepay everything all set, ready to go right now, not pay a, a single penny more when uh, when your time comes. And it's going to be a lot cheaper now than it will be in the future because one thing God ain't making more of than it's planned. So. Yeah. <laughs> When when are they gonna? Uh, do you think these cemeteries are gonna be around for a while? I mean, <laughs> people can't just keep dying and throwing them in land, you know, right? That's got to be going away. Cemeteries. Well, here in New York, what they just started doing as of January first is what they call body composting. And oh yeah, our governor, our governor signed it into law. But the problem with that is, is that nobody really knows what the whole process is. And apparently this is going to be the next big up and coming thing uh, instead of cremation is going to be all this body composting stuff. And what they're realizing with some of the tests that they've done with it is it takes about two years for your body to become into soil, but then that soil is contaminated because of all the medications that all these people are taking. Oh. So it's not really even composting at all. It's just disintegration yeah, pretty much. And then with the bones, they can't even uh, crush up those bones like what cremated remains are because those bones are still soft. They can't be cremulators that uh, these crematories are using, they can't even crush up any of the bones. Yeah, it's probably it's, body good. it's probably good you tell people that you're just in the medical field when you go to a bar <laughs> after hearing that. Yeah. <laughs> so what's what's the best way uh, to go? The best I, 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 what people are doing that what for the planet? Is that the deal? Say that again. Are they doing that for environmental what's the reasons? Best way to die. Well, what's uh, what's the easiest way to get rid of your body when it's gone? <laughs> Cremation. I, see, I'm not in the field of getting rid of bodies. I'm in I'm in the service of planning a funeral and letting somebody be able to say goodbye to their loved one, yeah, whether Charlie. that's burial or cre whether it's burial or whether it's cremation. And both of those if are you ways want of just getting a simple rid cremation. Yeah. If you just want a simple cremation and have a memorial service with a nice photo, if that makes you feel happy, then great. We'll do that for you. But if you need to see your loved one one last time, then have a like a mass or a service of some sort, we could do that as well. So to how me, much, it's not necessarily. Go ahead. How much do you charge for Viking funerals? <laughs> Sadly, it's illegal. It is. Oh, damn it! <laughs> well, what they, yeah. what, what the government don't know, they don't know. How much you charge? <laughs> I, I don't know because I've never done one before. That's a good oh, answer. Okay. Um, back one last question on the pl cemetery plot. You think Charlie and I can get a two for one deal? Yeah, I want to be buried next to Miles. Yeah. Yeah, some cemeteries, what they do is they'll sell you side-by-side -side graves or double-depth graves, depending right. on the cemetery double they depth? go to. <laughs> That'd be cool. Eternal, I on the eternal bunk beds, bunk beds, Charlie. I get top bunk. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. I'm going to decompose on you You don't want on me on, on the top eternity. bunk. There's a lot of liability <laughs> with that. Yeah. <laughs> how much How much does a plot uh, like that cost? Uh, like a single plot, you're depending on the cemetery because every single cemetery is different. You could be looking at the price range of about a thousand to two thousand dollars, and then for like a side by side grave, just double that pretty oh, much. Man, that's kind of a sunk cost, don't you think? <laughs> oh, my God. It sounds, oh, this really oh. sounds like a dirty business, Charlie. Yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> it can be. What's the weirdest, it can be, what's, the weir sure. what's the weirdest thing you've seen in the funeral business? Oh, God. Weirdest thing? I've had a family want to come in and have their loved one cremated and then flush their loved one's cremated remains down a toilet in a bar because that's where this lady's husband pissed all of his money away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a bird, I dude. Not. I really hope Ann doesn't listen to this because that's what she's going to do to me when I'm gone. I love that resentment. Did you do it for him? 
Uh, I, no, I all I did was I picked up the loved one, just <laughs> met with the family, had the loved one cremated, and then handed back the cremated remains to uh, the family. Whether or not they actually did that or not, I have no idea. Don't want to know. Don't need to know. Did they give you a Folgers tin for the ashes? <laughs> <laughs> I've had people actually do that before, too. Yeah. I've had people do that before. Stick me in the coffee can or in the cookie jar and put me up on the mantle. Yep. That's fun. That's fun. That's a good story. Got any other humdingers? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I get a lot of weird requests every every now and again, but nothing. The sad part is about funeral service is that nothing surprises me anymore. Every time I think something that I've seen it all, no, I haven't. Yeah. Yeah. No, I haven't. Same with the bar industry, I think, Charlie. We've seen it all. You know, oh, I, no, we haven't. I think, I think if I go, I'm gonna say, cut me up and spread me around. You know what I mean? Like the organs, get the organs out, right? If you're an organ donor, do you uh, just stuff yep. some pillows in there, or how does that work? <laughs> <laughs> nope, no, no, <laughs> no. Nope. Well, what do you do? Nope, I pretty much. Pre- uh, what I pretty much do is I just preserve you to that state and uh, clean you up and medically embalm you so you are viewable. And uh, I'll, I'll pretty much leave it at that. There are some things that ju- that are uh, just uh, stuck here in the trade that right. I don't really talk about that often. Let's say I die and I want the uh, tummy tuck package. Do you do that afterwards? It's got to be cheaper than getting one in real life, right? Good question. If I want to look like a chiseled model in the casket, can you do that for me? In theory, you could. Yeah. Not necessarily pra- Not necessarily practical, but in theory you could yeah to a certain extent give me a six pack to a certain extent. i can't give you a six i can't give you a six pack in a casket but i can i can take a couple pounds well maybe you're not as good as i thought you were but i think you could do it <laughs> what's the weirdest clothes what's the weirdest uh clothing you've ever buried someone in weirdest clothing first one that comes to my mind was a gentleman who ran a uh, predominant dairy factory here in buffalo and multi 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 millionaire huge corporation we laid him out uh in a spam t-shirt and a pair of jeans that a boy <laughs> i love that that a boy Anyone ever Donald Duck in it in the coffin? <laughs> no. 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 Would 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 if someone want if someone wanted to Donald Duck it, would you be opposed? I mean you can't see anything anyway. They're they're covered, you know. Get the I half mean, casket. I, had the, I have had the request of somebody wanting to be viewed butt naked Donald Duck, and I told them, look, it here's what I'll do. Uh, when we have you for the viewing, I will have you clothed. But once everybody leaves and it's time for me to close the casket and I know that casket isn't opening back up, I will unclose you. So good, was that I acceptable? A, I, I mean, Hey, if that's what the gentleman wanted, that's what the gentleman wanted and I'll give it to him. So nice. Meet him halfway to a certain extent. What? Okay. Okay. Well, man, this is this has been great. Yeah, really eye opening. <laughs> Anybody ever want to make themselves a like a sushi platter before they go? You know, like uh, make themselves the buffet table. Oh, you know, <laughs> body sushi. Body I sushi. Have, no, no, no. I have not. Well, no. maybe we'll inspire some of that after this podcast. You know, I don't know about that. hey, shout out your business. What's the name of your business? Let's get you. Maybe you he know, want, maybe he doesn't want that. Well, I don't know. No, no, I probably shouldn't be saying exactly what business I work for. Yeah. We lost a little trust oh, along the way, didn't we? It was the Donald Duckin comment, huh? <laughs> I guess you could say so. Yeah. <laughs> oh well, my gosh. All right, but no, man. It's an honor being a film director. It really is. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you calling in, man. This yeah. is great. Super fun. Abs- 
Absolutely, and I uh, just got to give one quick shout out to the Buffalo Bills. Go Bills, baby! Uh, you know, respect the Bills. Respect the Bills. You guys have been through a lot. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. Speaking. Oh, of we certainly have being buried six feet under. Oh yeah, yeah. A lot of missed field goals. <laughs> um, but uh, good uh, luck to you guys this oh, year. Yeah. Good luck to you. Thanks, boys. Go Packers too. All right, break a table for me uh, this year, huh? Absolutely, eh? We certainly will. Whenever, If you guys ever make it a chance to get up here to Buffalo, let me know. be happy to give you guys a tour. I'd love a tour. That'd be great. Awesome. Well, we'll, Absolutely. We'll All right, boys. Take care now. All right. Have a good one. Burn them good. See ya. Ah, Miles, you got that, that was a great call. That was awesome. 